It's like a double-edged sword, right? Jobs making you miserable. And you're trying to hang on to some sense of yourself and try not to succumb to your uh, breaking your val- values or any of your morals. You know, so you're trying to hold, you're trying to um, <laughs> play this game, this very dangerous game with your soul, you know. Um, You know, and you could lose all your money and, and, and people you love through this process. Um, but what I found out was I completely lost myself. Not because of the drugs or the mental illness. I became something else because I stayed in that business. Or... And, and, <laughs> That was the toughest part, right? Because now that you're no longer in that business, you're left with this shell of yourself. Like, who the fuck am I? I'm this now? Okay, well, what do I do? Oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Because this is the type of person I am. This is what I'm going to do, right? So you continue um, the same path because now you've become this thing. And this thing is miserable and full of hate. And you're gonna um, be drawn to um, your next job uh, that allows you to be that person. And that's what's gonna happen to me, right? Quote unquote, muscle to hire. You know, um, and then the light bulb falling goes off. And just like, um, I can't be this person anymore. It wasn't like, oh, I can't handle this mental illness anymore. Oh, I can't handle being a drug addict anymore. Oh, I can't handle being an alcoholic anymore. It was like, I want to, who the fuck was I when I was 18? <laughs> you know, when I'm looking everything back, like, let's see if we can find that guy again. You know, it's, what was that guy at 18 thinking about? You know, what was the dreams of that 18 year old? What was his aspirations? Of course, besides fucking getting laid, because 18 year olds, that's all they think of was getting laid, right? You know, um, and driving, driving home from out west, dude, it was like, it's impossible. There's no, I've done too much, I've come too far. There is just no way, um, to change what I become, what I became. And it all started from being in a job that I didn't like. <laughs> Actually, like, like is a is a soft word. Like I fucking hated going to work. I fucking hated it. <laughs> I can stress how much I hated it. <laughs> and body always been in my life since I was a kid. But something always threw me off track. Something always threw me off track. Even when I was Loblaws. You know, in the early days. Well, of course, my first... Uh, my first uh, memory of uh, bodybuilding was... Uh, Joe Weider's Bodybuilding Encyclopedia. It was like a package, you know? book and charts and stuff it was like in 1983 you know and I always it was I always went back to it and like I said I could never stick with it right like even when I got really sick when I was off um, probably 2000 it was probably 2013 just a couple years before I was let go um, I figured it out I had figured it out, um, but given that situation at that time, um, I just couldn't pursue it. 
a lot of reasons. Um, but that stuck with me. It stuck with me. You know, I even remember um, saying in one of my past videos, you know, um, I would, I was actually trying to think, when was I, since, you know, like, it couldn't have been all bad since I started uh, with Costco in 96. There must have been some points in my life where I was really happy, you know, there, there must have been some points in there. And a lot of those, the two of those times was when I was actually into bodybuilding, really into bodybuilding. You know, uh, 1998, um, me and my first fight were really uh, into, but like, we actually had a gym in our house. Uh, like, fucking, fucking serious fucking gym. <laughs> you know, I think we spent almost like, 10 grand on it. You know, um, and then back, then again in 2008, um, you know, um, working out made me happy, but just couldn't sustain it. I just couldn't sustain it. I wouldn't make it a priority over everything else. My job always came before that. Always came before that. You know? Came before your happiness, your own happiness. You know, you have to plan for your escape. You have to, if you're in a, in a shitty job, you know, and you want to follow your passion, you have to plan for it. Um, but what you failed to say is, um, it's going to be a hell of a lot more than that. It's going to be, um, you have to take a pretty good look at who you are now, you know, um, <laughs> and that was probably one of my biggest challenges. Um, the job became who I, who I was, like, it, that's what it was, the, the, this character, this turbo, this number one. You know, it, 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 there was no um, Scott outside of work and Scott at work. It was the same guy. You know, living the same story, living the same craziness. There wasn't a separation. There wasn't a home life and a work life. You know, um, that was the that was the hardest part. Was well. This person doesn't know how to do anything else. <laughs> oh, it's uh, definitely no secret. Um, the way I do things is extremely um, controversial um, or orthodox. <laughs> um, um, you know, especially given the stereotypes come along with cocaine um even with my past you know um because there was a time that um i'm not sure if uh addiction would be the right word but there was definitely um a line of of uh not controlling the consumption um and it messes with your head, right? Um, you doubt yourself, right? Um, um, is this really what I should be doing? Um, should I be doing things the traditional way? You know, um, <laughs> whatever the fuck that is. Um, the last time we tried to do things the traditional way, it fucking totally ruined my life, right? Bipolar medication. Um, destroyed everything that I worked for up to that point. Um... But you doubt yourself. You doubt yourself. You know, um, even as far, as, even though I've come as far as I have, um, there's always doubt, right? There's always doubt because of financial um, reasons, um, um, the cost to your body. Um, I've dealt myself many, many times, you know, um, <clears throat> and I've never came across, um, online, um, 
someone who takes the steps that I do. You know, um, I've learned um, in the last couple of years that um, one of the reasons, and I've wrote about this, um, why cocaine does have a positive effect on my perception is because of the ADHD, um, which I wasn't initially diagnosed with, but um, just being self-aware, it's pretty obvious that that's also um, something that I have to deal with. Because it just made a lot of sense. Um, so comes the reason for this video. You know, it's hard, hard enough to going through this alone, um, but it's even harder when um, you have no one to, no one understands your process. It's a very um, uh, lonely feeling. You know, um, it's not just something that you can explain to somebody. It can only be, uh, Unless you've gone through it, there's just no way to um, convey that. And the process and the perception shifts and the whole fucking process. Um, so leads me to this, the reason I'm doing this video. So um, I deliver insulation. And I had this delivery, um, was it last week? Well, my weeks and days are just blurs, but um, I had this delivery. And I initially, um, this one guy was helping me unload everything, and uh, you could tell um, <laughs> either he was coming down, or or uh, when you've used drugs, you recognize the signs when someone else is using or has used, right? And of course, I don't judge. I just try and make. Um, the situation is comfortable for that person as possible, right? Um, so I asked him, are you such and such? He says, no, um, that's the owner. Um, there's another guy coming by. He's going to help give us a hand. Um, so the second gentleman uh, arrived. And immediately, um, through his personality, and just the words he used, um, his mannerisms... You can tell this guy um, has extensive experience, uh, life experience in partying, uh, mental illness. It was just a vibe that I was very familiar with. Um, so we got to talking. We had an extremely um, long conversation um, about fucking everything from our our drug use, our drug dependencies, uh, our mental illnesses. He has ADHD and some other stuff um, that he's dealing with. Um, he ended up going to rehab. Um, he's been clean seven years. And I kind of asked him about that, you know, I asked him, do you really feel it's a victory for you, you know, um, if you could ever use drugs again? Because I was telling him my situation and how, um, I can control my drug use. And we had a big conversation about that. <clears throat> and he totally understood. <laughs> I couldn't fucking believe it. He totally understood um, what I have been doing, what I have been trying to do on my own. Um, and he just fucking got it. He understood it completely. Um, I think that's because he suffers ADHD so we had a long discussion on how stimulants um, are prescribed for people with that but it certainly doesn't account for uh, dealing with the bipolar disorder right that's a whole other animal in itself um, but I slowly um, tried to explain my process which I call the bridge you know, and I told him how difficult it was um, taking this new job and, and the process that I had to endure um, to be successful at it, you know. And he just fucking got it. It was like the first time in, I was diagnosed 2011, it's the first time 
um, that someone actually understood. Um, I don't know if validation is the correct, correct, um, um, correct way to say it. Um, cause I certainly don't want it to be misinterpreted as, um, you know, how some people, um, just need someone to agree with them, to, to, to agree with them, right? To see their side of things. It's not that. I assure you it's not that. You know, I'm not looking um, for someone um, to understand the way I do things. But it's nice to come across someone who does. You know, um, either way, no matter judgment on me or not, I'm going to continue to do things the way I do them. Um, but it was nice. It was really fucking nice to have someone understand um, for the first time. You know, um, it was an amazing conversation I had with this gentleman. Um, fuck, we probably talked for about an hour after we, um, um, after we finished unloading everything. You know, and after his, uh, he gave this guy some work to do, and we were having a conversation about drugs on the job with the millennials. And he was saying how difficult it is to, um, you know, because they they do roofing and stuff, so certain trades come with drugs. It's just the way it's always been. You know, trades. It's, I don't know. It's trades and drugs go together, and you know, and um, we had a long conversation about that and how to um, accept someone who uses drugs or drug troubles and how to manage that properly on the job. You know, and he was saying how difficult it was to. Um, find this common ground with millennials, right? Where, as in my in, in my time, um, it was a lot easier, right? Um, once you had, get that person to open up about their drug use, um, you're not gonna change, change them, but there's things you can find common ground, right? And my generation would appreciate, um, listen, I know you're fucked up, just give me two hours and then go home. Well, that same person with a drug problem will come in the next day and they'll break their back for you because there's this give and take, right? But <clears throat> with the new millennials, he's saying it's hard to find this give and take area. So we were kind of going back and forth, um, um, spit brainstorming and, 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 and trying to come up for solutions for his dilemma, right? And he says, yeah, I've tried that. I've tried that. And it just, he says, it's just, it's, the culture has changed, you know, um, and it's really difficult. And I told him, I says, you know what, I think I understand what you're going through. Because I kind of left um, um, that part of my life um, later. So I was starting to feel um, what he was feeling. Um, but it wasn't a real, real issue yet. Um, I imagine in the workplaces now, it's based on what he was telling me, you know. Um, but also, you know, you could see um, it was a conversation he was long overdue, long overdue with, you know, because I don't think he had someone who he could have um, vent in a way that someone could understood. So we, de I think, it was a conversation that definitely benefited us both, and it felt really good. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> fuck. <sighs> You know, um, you might ask yourself, um, did I befriend this person while I talked to this person again? Um, and the answer is no, and I'll tell you why. Um, I don't know if I've communicated this before or, or not, but, you know, my, my, my ultimate goal here is um, to find a balance in my life where um, I don't have to discuss any of this shit, any of it. I can just find a place of balance, though it's, it'd be in a hypomania world, but it, it'd be very, it, it, it'd be in a, a way that I can control without anything, um, like drugs or whatever. Um, just to find a place and then just 
forget about everything. You know, I don't want to think about um, bipolar disorder. I don't want to talk about bipolar disorder. I don't want to talk about um, how it's affected my life. Or I want to put it all behind me. I want to find a place where I can be successful and then forget about fucking all of it. Put my past behind me completely. That's the goal. I just want to think about normal shit have normal goals and you know but it, it's defined um that's a perception right it's a perception and with everything that I've gone through um the problem is um dealing with all these different perceptions right and the bridge is a way for me to cut through all that shit and find um a healthy perception, you know, um, whether, and that applies to work, personal relations, because I've mentioned many times that when it comes to love, my perception is really skewed and it's really fucked up. The heart's there and the emotion's there, but um, I have a really hard time um, evaluating love and, and, and that situation. You know, that'll be my final thing that I have to confront with. You know, and, and, and find, um, because previous to going back to work, you know, I was fine alone completely. Like, I, I had a perception that I was good with. I had that 1% perception that I've talked about in videos. And unless this person meets that 100%, that's 1% niche, um, I don't even think about it, right? I won't even entertain the thought. I won't even, and, 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 I won't even pursue that. And the thing about going back to work full time, um, I had to revisit all this, all this stuff again, and because that, all that, the perception I laid out for me to that point uh, was rock solid. So it's like you have to revisit everything again and find um, the correct per perception, you know. And <laughs> I know it's, I know it's hard for you guys to explain, but. When I'm having this conversation with this gentleman, he knew exactly what I was talking about. You know, so it's, um, it's confusing, it can be confusing, um, but when you talk to someone who understands, it's like having someone uh, reading your mind and someone answering sentences um, before you finish them. So it was, uh, it was nice, it was real nice. Um, what else, what I, is there anything else I want to say about that conversation? Um, well, it's not really because, you know, there's, um, like you guys know how difficult it is uh, for me to talk about this. Um, kind of stuff um but with him it was totally effortless you know I had people in my past um telling me that you know I should go to support groups and and or go to AA meetings or NA meetings um or kind of search out people um with bipolar or ADHD and you know have support groups and, and, it's just, it's just, it's not me. It's, it's, I don't. It's almost like I don't want to be around it because I want to beat it, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't. Maybe one thing is I don't want to hear, um, so hear from other people who were sharing how hard it is for them you know to me um that's not bringing something positive you know it's like i don't want to go to a meeting two or three times a night um and hearing how hard it is for someone when you know exactly what they're going through you know um i don't know if that's selfish or 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 what but like i like to give myself a break <laughs> you know not be reminded 
constantly um, of the struggle. Um, um, yeah, and, and there's no doubt. Like I'm, there's no doubt. I know things are gonna be okay. Um, it's just, it's just the process is so difficult. <laughs> um. I think um, when it comes to support groups and uh, things of that nature, um, I think yeah, there is it, it. It can be very very beneficial to someone, but I think for me, it kind of falls in that category of talking to doctors. And, um, psychologists or psychiatrists, it's just, I don't know why, um, there's just no trust there. There's, there's this disconnect. There's this, it just doesn't work for me. I don't, I'm not sure why it just doesn't. Um, Maybe that stems from um, my original diagnosis and um, and having everyone pressure me to take medication, um, go to rehab, like um, instead of listening to what I was, what I really needed. You know, I needed to get out of that fucking career. Uh, I needed a stable environment. Um, I needed healthy relationships. You know, so it, it's just, um, in my eyes, all the advice and, and the steps that I was told to take um, ruined my life. Make no mistake, ruined my life at that point. Um, as much doubt as I had over the years, um, doing things my way, um, Yes, it cost me lots of lots of money and lots of time, almost my life. Um, but I did get to this point, right? Doing it my way. Um, so it's real hard, um, I guess, to take um, advice from others uh, as far as the best way to live my life is concerned. Um, but hearing, um, after this conversation, um, I have with this gentleman during my delivery, you know, I actually stopped and I made a video right away because I, uh, I wanted to, um, share how I felt, um, about this conversation and I ended up deleting the video, um, cause it didn't, it was a lot that I kind of, um, didn't um, come across properly or a lot of stuff I left out um, but it, it was that one in one um, it was that one in one interaction um, it was the it wasn't forced um, the conversation wasn't planned it wasn't on a Tuesday night at seven or, <laughs> you know, it was, it was something that happened organically and naturally. And I find with most things in life, um, even figuring life out, um, that's usually the way it happens, right? When you try and force a situation and you're looking so hard for a solution or it just, when you force it, it doesn't come and it doesn't come in the right way. Um, in this conversation I had with this gentleman, couldn't have come at a more pivotal time. Um, that conversation came exactly when I needed it most. Because if that conversation happened earlier, I would have had left less experience. Uh, I wouldn't have uh, properly um, um, uh, articulated my ideas and thoughts, and 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 so I could get. A proper response um, from him. 
so it was a uh, it was it's it makes you it makes you wonder you know if things do happen for a reason and how some things in like there's things that happen in your life that just seem to come at the perfect time and and that discussion and that conversation did it came at a perfect perfect time you know um life is just it's full of surprises <laughs> um so i have my family coming here um a couple hours so i'm gonna cut this video short um I can't think of anything else to say. I just wanted to tell you guys about this conversation I had with this person, and yeah. So, um, till I see you guys again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. God well, bless you all. Mental wounds not healing. Life's a bit of shame. I'm going on.